So uh, I got asked a question today by one of our coaching clients and I wanted to kind of bring this answer to the group because I think it's relevant. And uh, this client, I'm gonna tag here, hello, Miss Gunning. Uh, she said, when I get a lead, I wanna track every lead because that's something we've been working on with her and her business. She said, but what do I do when a realtor says, hey, uh, I gave you this, I, I gave your name to this guy, uh, Brian Duffy, he's probably gonna give you a call. Okay, uh, do I track Ryan Duffy with no contact information? Do I put it in there as a potential lead? How do I code it? What do I put it on my spreadsheet? And although I'm always, always thankful when a realtor gives out my name, anytime I get that conversation or anytime I get that talking point, hey Scott, I gave your name to uh, you know Brian Alpha, whatever, uh, I, I told him to give you a call, he needs to get pre-approved. I immediately, if I get that information by text or email, I give them a call immediately, or if we're on the phone, I just start the conversation. And I say, um, the first person I had this conversation with was a gentleman named Dan Ortega. I said, hey Dan, here's the deal. When you give Brian my contact information, you're basically telling him to go do homework. And nobody likes to do their homework. So here's what's probably gonna happen and here's how it's probably gonna play out. He's gonna go radio silent for a couple days or a couple weeks or a couple months. And in a couple days, weeks or months, when he gets super motivated about seeing 123 Main Street, he's gonna call you, Dan, and say, hey, let's go see 123 Main Street. I saw it on Redfin or you sent it to me. This is a great piece of property. I think it might work for me. And then Dan, you're gonna turn to, you're gonna turn to Brian Alpha and you're gonna say, uh, hey, Brian, cool, we're gonna go see it. Did you get pre-approved? Can you actually afford this house? Is your mortgage approved? And in that moment, Brian's gonna be so embarrassed that he didn't do his homework. He's gonna say, uh, yeah, well, Dan, I called him and he never called me back. And so now everybody's in a weird relationship because one, the client is in a relationship with a realtor where he has set the precedent that I'm going to lie to you when things aren't going my way or I forget to do my piece of the puzzle. The realtor's in a situation because now he's referred somebody, me, who might be a piece of shit and have not called back his client and he doesn't know whether to take the side of his client or take the side of his preferred loan officer and say, no, 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 Scott always calls my people back. There must've been a miscommunication, call him again. Or is he gonna side with the client who's gonna put future commissions in his pocket um, and say, okay, great, call this other guy, he'll call you back. Uh, now I'm in a bad position because I'm feeling horrible. Did I miss a lead? Did I miss something? Did I actually forget to call him back? Is this client lying to you, Dan? Did I let you down? Am I gonna get any more business from you? So it creates this horrible, horrible situation, this triangle of distrust, opposite of the triangle of trust. And it, uh, it just, it, it puts everything on the wrong footing. And if you talk to a realtor about this, they'll kind of shake their head like, oh yeah, I've had that situation before where Billy here was supposed to get pre-approved. He said that, uh, you know, Joe Parisi never called him back. I know Joe Parisi is a great lender. I know Joe Parisi is a great lender. He probably called him back. The client probably just did his homework. Now everybody's confused. Who didn't do their job? Who didn't make the call? And it just feels shitty. So here's what I do. I explain that story. I explain to the realtor how that happens. And then I tie it into why it's not good for the realtor. And look, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, Maybe that was a lead I could have got. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's a deal. Maybe it's not. But you've now put yourself, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, in a situation where you might be sending follow-up information to a client for weeks or months who doesn't qualify. Or worse off, you might now start showing them houses because you feel bad. You don't know if your preferred lender forgot to make that call. You feel a little bit behind the eight ball. And you've got to now kind of acquiesce and go show them properties without knowing if they're actually qualified. Everybody, big waste of time, puts everybody in a comfortable position. Here's what we need to do, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, Dan, uh, my buddy Dan. What we need to do is when Brian Alpha says, oh, I'm kicking the tires, I'm thinking about buying a house. Great. Let me get your email. I'm going to introduce you by email to my preferred lender, Scott Groves. Uh, he does, you do not have to work with him. Uh, I, you know, he'll take the Pepsi challenge against any other lender out there. Basically say anything other than he'll get you a great rate. Don't say I'm gonna get him a great rate because there's always a greater rate out there. So Dan, what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, let me get your email address, I'm gonna introduce you and Scott. He's not pushy, you can use whoever you want, but he's going to start the conversation with you to see what you're pre-approved for. I'll introduce you to on a thread. You can start the conversation, start getting uh, the paperwork over to him. And you know, in Southern California, there's a big difference between a $500,000 house and a $600,000 house. There's a huge difference between 600,000 and 800,000. I don't wanna break your heart by showing you something more expensive that you can never afford, and I don't wanna leave stuff on the table if we're evaluating, if we're not evaluating the things that you could afford. So let's just get that ball rolling and that'll work out.
Dan makes the introduction, and now there's this social peer pressure. There's a social peer pressure that Dan knows, that the client knows, that I know, that we all know, that we've been introduced. Now he has homework to do. The realtor can do his follow-up piece. I can do my two, three, four, five step follow-up piece to get the pre-approval. The client's now getting worked from both angles to get started with his paperwork and his pre-approval. The realtor knows that I know, I know that I'm informed, the client all knows that we all know that something's supposed to come of this, and now we have a much better situation where we can plug in name contact information email phone number into our spreadsheet track it as a real lead we have somebody to add to our database we have a client to follow up with for a potential pre-approval and the realtor gets serviced at a higher level because we've all been introduced so find a way to tell that story and make it your own and make sure that you can express that on a moment's notice to a realtor when they say hey i gave your card to billy and billy's going to call you Thanks, I appreciate that, but here's why that doesn't work for me. And then give them an option that's going to work better for them and for you and for the client. And I hope that helps. Um, we will talk to you all soon. Bye.